Well, hey everybody, welcome to our Easter Sunday service. Come on. So excited to be able to share today's message with you all today on this fine Easter Sunday. Now this season, we've been going through stories of the cross, talking about the different events that led up to Jesus' crucifixion. And then today, what we're talking about is the resurrection. Yes. So it's going to be great. We're going to talk about it. But have you guys been enjoying the different stories of the cross? We talked about how Jesus had met with many different people and the events leading up to the crucifixion. Uh, we, we broke bread and shared wine. Well, not technically. We had rice crackers and uh, tea here in Tokyo. But maybe for you guys somewhere out there, you had bread and wine. And if you did, sounds like a party. But we're celebrating the amazing things that Jesus did. And last week, we talked about what Jesus did on the cross. And even on the cross, how Jesus was thinking about others. That even though he was experiencing the most excruciating pain known to man, he was still thinking and loving on the people, even the people that put him on the cross. And so this is the Jesus that we serve. And we know as believers that the story doesn't end there. That the story doesn't end with Jesus giving up his life on the cross, curtains closed, and everyone goes home. No, the story actually continues because three days later, Jesus rose again. Come on. And so that is the entire point of our faith, the entire reason we celebrate, the entire reason we have Easter is because Jesus rose again. So why did Jesus have to die? Well, we all humans... We're born into this world with a little something called sin. And unfortunately, we can't avoid it and we can't do anything about it. That's why Jesus came to this earth to die for us. It says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is why Jesus came to this earth. This is why he was put on a cross for you and me was to take our sin away. And when we talk about the word sin, sometimes people can get a bit funny about what this word means. They think it means some major crime, like, you know, murder or, you know, any of these other things. And yes, certainly that would be in the category of sin. But sin is more simple than that. Because we as humans, we we mess up. We make mistakes. We do things that we know we shouldn't do. Or we say things or we think things that we know we shouldn't do, say or do. I said do twice. (laughs) Sin is what we call missing the mark. This is it. This is the mark. This is what I should do. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. We miss the mark all the time. It's part of being human. And that's why Jesus had to come to this earth. Because because, because of this sin, we are separated from the love of God. And God wanted to bridge the gap He wants us to know Him. He wants us to have a relationship with Him. And that's why Jesus came. And He came to die so that He could take the sin of the world upon Himself, like we talked about last week. And He was nailed and He nailed our sins to the cross. And He rose again three days later. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So today's message I called Resurrection Celebration. It doesn't really rhyme, but it sounds kind of nice, don't you think? Today we're talking about the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. And so let me read this story. We're going to look at a few different stories today, and this is one of them. But I I chose this one to read first because I like one of the phrases here, and you'll know why in just a moment. So Luke 24, verse 1 to 7, it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women came to the tomb bringing the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, suddenly two men in radiant apparel stood beside them. As the women bowed their faces to the ground in terror, the two men asked, these are angels, by the way, the two men asked them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. I love this. This is one of the most epic phrase is one of the most epic verses in the Bible. The angels continue, remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And on the third day, 
rise again. They were like, remember, remember. And so the women are having this moment in their mind when all of a sudden, all these things that didn't make sense, that Jesus said, that didn't make sense, all of a sudden, click, 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 click. It's all making sense. And they're starting to realize it's true. That Jesus is alive. Jesus has been raised from the dead. And so they go off and they go and tell the other believers, the other disciples, hey, guess what? Remember those obscure things that Jesus would say every now and then? Hey, that was all true. Hey, guess what? Jesus is risen. He is not here. He is risen. And I love this phrase. I love this scripture because our entire faith revolves around these three words. He is risen. Without these three words, without Christ being raised from the dead, our entire faith is pointless. Everything is meaningless. Us being here, you listening to this video, it's all meaningless. But in fact, Christ did rise from the dead. So when you hear these words, He is risen, what do you feel? What do you think when you hear these things? For some, you may feel a sense of joy, a sense of happiness, a sense of thankfulness, a sense of celebration. Because you know that Christ is risen and that Christ has saved you. But for others, maybe it's your first time watching this or or listening to a message like this and you're thinking, He is risen? People rising from the dead? Is that even possible? What does science say about that? And maybe you're struggling in your mind to wrap your head around the concept to be able to believe that this actually, this event actually happened. Well, we believe That the Word of God, the Bible, is true, is factual, that everything is God-breathed and that everything that happened in the Bible are real things that have happened, real historical events. And the more that time goes on, the more that people explore and discover, the more that scholars study and the more that archaeologists uncover different things in different areas around Jerusalem and Israel and that area of the world, the more that they uncover, the more it proves that the Bible is not just a book about faith, but is also a historical book. It also reveals historical events and historical facts that really did happen. Hmm. Isn't that interesting that even worldly scholars and historians are now corroborating what the Bible has been saying for all these thousands of years? Isn't that amazing? And so today, we're going to unpack a few things that happened and a few things that the Bible says about what Jesus did when he rose from the dead. So I've got a couple of scriptures that talk about the fact that Jesus did rise again. Here we go. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. It said, During the 40 days after he, <coughs> he suffered and died, He, Jesus, He appeared to the apostles from time to time and He proved to them in many ways that He was actually alive. And He talked to them about the kingdom of God. I love this. I love this that this is in the Bible saying that Jesus appeared to people not just once, But many times, Jesus appeared to people over and over because maybe once they were like, wow, that was a crazy dream. And then Jesus appears to them again. It's like, well, maybe this wasn't a dream. Maybe he is risen. You see, I got another scripture for you. And this is Paul talking in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he's giving an account of some of the appearances that Jesus made while he was risen and walking the earth after he was crucified. So verse 2 Uh, to 8, but verse 2 is really important. It says, By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. And this is what we're talking about. If He is not risen, then there is literally no point of us being here today, of me speaking about this, of us even being on YouTube or wherever you're watching this from. There's no point because everything ties into these simple three words that Christ is risen. Otherwise, what's the point of believing this? We believe in this because it is meaningful and it is true. Jesus rose from the dead. Verse 3, it continues. It says, For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, which is 
Peter, Cephas is the word for the rock. Jesus called Peter the rock, and on this rock I will build my church. To him, Jesus appeared to him, and then to the 12. Now we're going to come back to this because it's quite important. But after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep, which means by the time this was written, some of those people had passed away. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as one abnormally born or born out of place, born out of the right time. And so Paul is listing these different accounts of people witnessing. He says, eyewitness accounts of a risen Jesus. Uh, we believe everything in the Bible is true and factual and historical. Jesus rose from the dead. I love it. And so today, I want to go over the events that happened the day Jesus rose from the dead. Did you know that we have at least five encounters that are listed in the Bible of different people, different groups that, peop uh, that Jesus actually met the day he rose from the dead? Isn't that fascinating? And the best part is that every single encounter that Jesus has with people, there was joy. There was celebration. There was thankfulness. There was a party because he is risen. So let's jump into it. The first encounter, the first person to find out that Jesus, in fact, is alive is Mary Magdalene. And Mary has had a history. Uh, she had a tough past, many tough things in her life. And Jesus rescues her. He saves her. He delivers her from seven demons it talks about. It talks about how Mary loved Jesus. She was so thankful to Jesus and she was broken to hear and see that Jesus was crucified. So very early, first thing in the morning on this day, she goes to the tomb to pay her respects. And when she gets there, she realizes the stone is rolled away. The tomb is open. So she goes in, she has a look, and the body is gone. And so she starts to freak out. She starts to cry. She starts to panic, thinking, somebody has stolen my body. My Jesus, somebody has stolen his body. Where is my Lord? And she freaks out, and boom, these angels appear. And they say to her, what are you doing here? Mary, what are you, what's going on? And she's like, yeah, they've taken him. They've taken Jesus away. Please tell me where he is. And then we have this encounter. Are you ready? John chapter 20, verse 14. It says, she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus. But she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, I imagine Jesus with a big smile on his face. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked, who are you looking for? She thought that he was the gardener. So she didn't even know it was Jesus. I don't know if he was like trying to like, you know, keep it secret for a moment and then do the big reveal. Or if she was just like so many tears in her eyes that anybody she just couldn't recognize at this time. She says to the gardener, Sir, if you have taken him away, please tell me where you have put him. And I, I will go and get him. I'll bring him back. Jesus turns to her and says one word, Mary. <laughs> I love it. He calls her by her name, Mary. It's such a beautiful scene. And Mary, in this moment, she realizes, she cries out, Rabboni, which means teacher. She recognizes that this is Jesus. Now, I don't know how Jesus said the word Mary. Maybe he said it in a cheeky way. Maybe he kind of whispered it. It was like, Mary. <laughs> and then she realized, oh, Jesus. Or maybe he said it in a big way. He was like, Mary. And she realized, oh my goodness, this is Jesus. I don't know how he said it. And I also don't know how long that she was crying and holding on to Jesus. But you can tell that this was a massive, massive moment. Because Jesus has to say, don't cling to me because I haven't ascended to the Father yet. But go and find my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. And then she gave them this message. So Jesus is like, Mary, we can't be here all day. You have an important task. You need to go and tell the others that I am risen. And so she runs off crying full of joy, full of celebration. See, it was a celebration. Jesus is 
alive. And then the second encounter was a group of women that then shortly followed after Mary. They came to the tomb as well. And this is the one that we just read earlier, right? They came and the angel said, Why are you looking for the dead um, or the living among the dead? He is not dead. He is risen. And then they go and find the disciples and the other believers and they tell them, Guess what? He is risen. Then we have another encounter. And this encounter is really Really cool. It's Peter. Jesus meets with Peter first. Out of all of the disciples, it's Peter. The one that was all, you know, brave and brash and like, Jesus, I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. And then when it really counted, when it really mattered, Jesus, Peter denied Jesus three times. He makes eye contact with Jesus. And it says that he wept bitterly because he knew that he had betrayed his friend, his Lord, his Savior. He, he betrayed Jesus. And so Peter would have been in the lowest moment in his life. He would have hated himself. He would be in the deepest depression. He would have been having some pretty dark thoughts, I think. And in the midst of all of that, in the midst of Peter even thinking, I am not worthy to be a disciple, to be called a follower because I stopped following. In the midst of all of that, Jesus meets Peter. Right where he's at. And I imagine, we, I wish we had a record of the actual encounter, of the actual words that Jesus and Peter had. But I imagine it was similar to maybe Mary, where Jesus appears to Peter and he says one word to him, Peter. Wouldn't that be beautiful that Jesus just says one word to Peter and Peter breaks down and says, Lord, and they embrace. And then Peter, so full of joy, so full of celebration, he goes off and he finds the disciples. Right? We read that. We read that in, in 1 Corinthians where Paul says that Jesus appeared to Peter and then to the other disciples. And we're going to find out in just a moment that Jesus appeared to the disciples later that night. So between the women and Mary and the disciples at night, somewhere in between, Jesus encounters Peter. And there is a celebration. Come on, I love it. Then the next encounter are these two believers and they're on the way from Jerusalem to another town called Emmaus. And they're on the road and they're discussing all the things that have transpired in the past few days. And they would have been pretty depressed too, to be honest. They would have been sad. They would have been talking about, man... I thought that Jesus was going to do this. I thought he was going to save our people. I've, and this happened, but then this happened. And does that, What do you think? Does that mean? And then, as they're talking about all these things, Jesus, he just appears, walking alongside of them. And he, I, imagine Jesus with the cheeky smile once again, questioning them, saying, so what are you guys talking about? Knowing full well what they're talking about. And the guys, I imagine, just stop in their tracks and turn And look at this guy who they didn't recognize. We're noticing a pattern here. They didn't recognize it was Jesus. They looked at him and said, dude, are you the only one in this whole area that does not know the events that have happened over these past few days? Where have you been? (laughs) And Jesus smiles at them and he goes, tell me more. He says, go on, (laughs) which is one of my favorite phrases to say. But he says, come on, tell me what's happened. And so they talk about it and they're on the road and Jesus is like, guys, you're missing the point. Didn't Jesus say this? And they're like, yeah, he said this, but this happened. And they had this whole conversation on the road to Emmaus. And they arrive and it's nightfall, right? The sun is going down. And the guys arrive and they're like, hey, why don't you stay with us? Take, have a meal with us. And Jesus is like, well, all right, you, you twisted my arm. I guess I'll, I'll sit down and have a meal with you guys. And as he sits down with these guys, he breaks bread. And it says in that moment, their eyes were open and they recognized that this, in fact, was Jesus. And then Jesus is like, peace. And he disappears. <laughs> but I love what these guys say in that moment. They turn to each other in Luke chapter 24 and they say, Didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and as he explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem and there they found the 11 disciples and others. Hmm, Who are the others? The other women that encountered Jesus that day who had gathered with them who said, The Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. I love that. I love that it notes that he appeared to Peter. He's restoring Peter. 
It's amazing to see. And I imagine these guys, they come to the house and there's a big commotion. Everyone's kind of talking and some people are like, no, he's really alive. And others are like, are you serious? We saw that he was crucified. And then these guys come along and they're like, guys, you'll never guess what happened. And they look at the dudes and like, let me guess, Jesus is alive. And they're like, yes, how did you know? And they're like, well, we we heard it from Peter. Yeah, Peter's been going on about it for a while. And they're like, we saw him, he was on the road. And they're having this, this party, this conversation, and people are starting to believe, allowing themselves to believe. Really? Could Jesus, could he really, really? Is he actually alive? And then the disciples at night, They're all gathered in this place. They're all discussing. And Luke 24, verse 36, says, Just as they were telling about it, the guys that just arrived, they're like, hey guys, Jesus is alive. Just as they were saying these words, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. (laughs) But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. I love this scene. I love it. Because I, I, again, I imagine Jesus is having fun. Every encounter, he's having fun. He's, he's going along with it. He's kind of rolling with the punches. But it, no one's really throwing punches. But anyway, Jesus is there. And he's like, hmm, okay, everyone's here. And a few of them have seen me, but some of them are still doubting. How am I going to appear? Am I going to use the front door? No, I'll just teleport into the middle of them and say, peace be with you. (laughs) And it's exactly what he does. And everybody starts freaking out. And I think that's kind of the, the reaction Jesus was hoping to have. And so Jesus, again, with a big smile, I imagine him saying, why are you frightened? Knowing full well that someone just teleported into the midst of them. He says, why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it is really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies. And as you can see, I do. And as he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. So he's like, guys, I'm real. Look, look, you see these, you see these holes in my hands and in my feet? It's me. I'm the real deal. Come and come and touch me. Come and see that I am really real, that I'm not a ghost, that I'm actually resurrected here with you. Still, they stood there in disbelief, but filled with joy and wonder. I like that. I like that because their hearts understood, but their minds were trying to catch up. They knew in their heart that this is real, that this is Jesus, and they allowed themselves to feel joy and wonder. However, it said they stood there in disbelief. So their head was trying to catch up with their heart. And I know some of you are like that today, that you're wondering, is He risen? Is this real? Can this really be for me? Did Jesus really die for me? I believe that in your heart, you know it to be true. But for some reason in our heads, it takes us a while to catch up to what our heart knows is true. It says, then Jesus asked them, (laughs) He has the audacity to ask them, So, uh, you got something to eat around here? (laughs) And so they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he ate it as they watched. I imagine this whole scene, Jesus sits down, he's got his fish and he's like, yo, check this out. And he just simply eats a fish. (laughs) But all the disciples are there like, hmm, wow, look at this. Isn't this amazing? A man is eating a fish. I just love it. I love the fun. I love the joy. I imagine that they just celebrate and praise God because He is risen. What an amazing story. This all happened on one day, the day that Jesus rose from the dead. And I believe, we believe that the gospel, the Bible is true. The events are real and that Jesus is alive today. And He wants a relationship with you because I believe in a risen God. I believe in a God that is alive, a God that has changed me, a God that has saved me. Because although that I was, I was born into a Christian family, I grew up hearing amazing stories, stories like this about God and about the amazing things that Jesus did, I still needed to make a decision for myself to believe in Jesus. My background didn't determine my faith. Jesus saved me because I am a sinner too. I have fallen short of the mark many, many times. I am also human. 
and I know many people as well that have accepted Jesus into their life and how their lives has been changed, just like my life has been changed. And I believe today that Jesus wants to come into your life and change you from the inside out. So today, on this amazing Easter Sunday, I would love to pray with you all together. So why don't you raise your hands with me and let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this Easter Sunday. God, we thank you that Jesus, you are risen, that we worship a living Savior. God, I pray that we would just be filled with joy. We're filled with gratitude. We're filled with the desire to live our life for you to live our life on purpose, to do something meaningful for you and for your kingdom. I pray, God, that you would touch us afresh. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. And lastly, like I mentioned, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus yet, I want to pray for you. If you want to believe in Him for the first time or you want to come back to Him, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to say now, and when I do, I'm just going to simply ask you to either raise your hand or make that decision in your heart. And I'm just going to pray for you. So if that's you, and you want to accept this living Savior into your life, if you want to accept His true love, His true joy, true freedom into your life, then we're going to pray. Are you ready? Three, two, one, now. Why don't you make that decision to believe and accept Jesus? Amen. Come on. Well, hey, if you made that decision, can I pray for you really quick? Let's pray. God, I thank you for these amazing people making this decision. I pray that you come into their life right now in a powerful way. I pray that you would remove their sin from them and make them white as snow. And God, I pray that you would fill them with joy, fill them with a sense of celebration, fill them with a sense of excitement that you are alive, that you are risen. I pray that you would give them a hope for the future and an excitement for what you're going to do in their life. We thank you. We praise you. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, happy Easter to all of you guys watching online. I pray that this was a great time for you. And I'm so excited to see you all next week because we're going to have an amazing series coming up next. We'll tune in then and see you there.